morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we're blessed to have our VBS choir singing with us today. They'll be singing after the sermon during the offering. So any of the kids who are not up in the balcony yet, they'll encourage you to head up after the sermon as we sing our offertory. Uh, we do have our picnic today, so please do stick around after the service. Uh, you can head down to the activity center. We'll have seats set up both inside and outside. Uh, have a meal, some games. It'll be a great time, so hopefully you can stick around uh, for that today as well. Uh, we'll be blessing our youth as they head off to the Higher Things Conference this coming week, and also uh, bidding farewell and Godspeed to the Valettas as they move to their new home as well. So we pray God's blessings on our worship today as we begin with number 797, Praise the Almighty.
said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make the, a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you do not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness to our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came down and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depths of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, 
This is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand In Jesus' name. Amen. Is Jesus going to be okay? With wide open eyes, a quiver to his lip, and a tremble in his voice, one of our VBS students asked me that question on Thursday morning. I was reading the story of Jesus' crucifixion to the class. This was probably the first time that he had heard the story, at least that he could remember and understand it. And as we went through Jesus' arrest in Gethsemane, his trials before the chief priests and Pontius Pilate, and the humiliation of the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Jesus' situation got worse and worse. And so this child got more and more worried about Jesus. Was he going to make it? Was Jesus going to be okay? It's hard for us who know the crucifixion story well to imagine what it would be like to hear the story and not know the ending, to hear it for the very first time. Never having heard that, yes, Jesus would die, 
But on the third day, he would rise from the dead. Is Jesus going to be okay? Jesus' own friends and followers must have asked themselves that question countless times in the hours between his arrest, his trials, his torture, and his crucifixion. They had seen Jesus do some amazing miracles. They had seen him answer the questions and handle the attacks of the Pharisees over and over again. No matter how many times Jesus told his disciples that, yes, he was going to Jerusalem to die, but he would rise again, it never fully sank in. Even the disciples on the road to Emmaus said to the risen Christ who they did not recognize, we had hoped that he would be the one. You know the story of Jesus well. Every Sunday here in church and hopefully every day in your home, you confess that creed. You proclaim the truth that, yes, Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate. Yes, he was crucified, died, and was buried. But on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. No matter how hopeless the scene looked at Gethsemane, at Caiaphas' house, at Pilate's palace, or even on Golgotha itself, you go through Good Friday year after year knowing that Easter is coming and that Jesus is going to be okay. But what about Jesus' kingdom, his body, his church. Is the church going to be okay? And I don't just mean Zion Lutheran Church in Naperville. And I don't mean the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. I mean the church with a capital C, the one holy Christian and apostolic church. Is that church going to be okay? Sometimes it doesn't look like it, does it? For a time, it seemed like young people would rise up in the church and then abandon it later in life. Now young people don't even bother coming to church in the first place. And many folks stopped going to church during COVID and just simply never came back. At one time, being a member of a church was simply expected. It was respectable. It was normal, what everybody did. Now, if you actually go to church, you're the weird one. You're the strange one, the one who stands out among your friends. Will the church still be around for your kids and your grandkids to grow up in? Or are we too far gone? It's easy to despair of the kingdom of the church as we listen to Jesus' parable of the sower. As the sower goes out to sow, as the preacher goes out to preach the word, what happens in the first three instances? What happens to the first three batches of seed? Do they all sprout and grow and produce a fruitful harvest? No. The birds take some, the sun scorches others, the weeds take the rest. Over and over again, the seed fails to grow. You know all too well what this means and what this looks like. and You've experienced it in your own life as well. How many people do you know who have hardened their hearts against God's word? They've made up their mind. They're not even going to bother to listen anymore. They've decided that the Bible is old-fashioned, out of date, bigoted, intolerant, irrational, and they aren't even open to hearing what God says to them. And that old evil crow, Satan, swoops in and takes the word away from them. Then there's a second batch of seed. How many people do you know who have given up on God when life has gotten difficult? A lost job, a bad illness, a ruined marriage, and since God didn't fix it and make everything right, that he's not for them. They have no roots to draw water from the depths when the sun comes out, when hardships and persecutions beat down upon them, and they quickly wither and fall away. And then we have the third batch. How many people do you know who may have nothing against Jesus or his church, they just don't have time for him? Sports, travel, work, family, you name it, have sucked all the time out of their week, and slowly, gradually, their faith is choked out by everything else going on around them until it is finally gone. It's easy to get pessimistic. It's easy to be worried about the church when we consider all of these stories. You have your own story, too. You know people who would fit any of these soil types. 
It's enough to make you say, is the church going to be okay? Is Jesus going to be okay? The answer, of course, is yes. The seed is still being sown. There is still that fourth and final batch of seed. The good soil. Those who are open to hearing God's word and ready for it to take root within them. Like our friends from BBS this week who heard the word of God and who learned the prayers and the songs of the church, the creeds and the liturgies and the hymns with open hearts. Jesus promises that yes, there will be a good crop, even more than what was sown. In fact, 30, 60, even 100 times more will be yielded from his good seed in the good soil. Jesus draws our attention to the great harvest of the fruit that will be borne by all those who hear the word of God and who take it to heart. Today is a day to give thanks for the fruit of this past week, for the dozens of students and volunteers who have gathered for VBS this week to hear God's word. We may never see the fruit that is borne by all the seeds that were planted this week, but we trust Jesus' promise of the harvest. We trust what Jesus promised through Isaiah the prophet, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I send it. Dear friends, the church, the kingdom of God, is going to be okay. And yes, Jesus is going to be okay too, of course. He died and was planted in the ground like a little seed but he sprung to life again on Easter morning. And so it will be for you too. Not even death will be able to destroy you who have died with Christ and risen with him in holy baptism. We have a future in store for us that is far more glorious than just okay. And that resurrection, that new life, is what gives us hope today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand. We invite those who are uh, singing in the BBS choir to head upstairs. We'll continue with our office.
our Lord's word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Vacation Bible School students, volunteers, and their families, that the word that they've heard this week take root and grow, producing a bountiful harvest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Kelsey and Maddie, they prepare for childbirth, that they rejoice in the steadfast love of the Lord on those who fear him, and his righteousness to their children's children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Devin, Gus, Kevin, Robert, Anita, Harley, Olivia, Remley, and William, that they go out in joy and be led forth in peace, as the mountains and hills before them break into singing, and all the trees of their field clap their hands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joel and Heather, James and Emily, and Mark and Donna, as they celebrate their wedding anniversary, that they care for one another as the Lord cares for us, being merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all those who are sick, recovering from illness and injury, uh, those on our hearts and minds today, especially those who we name before you now. 